Laudator Jesus Christus. Praise be Jesus Christ. And welcome back to Vatican Radio's live coverage and ongoing coverage of the Pope's apostolic visit to Bahrain. The Holy Father has arrived at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Arabia for an ecumenical meeting and a prayer for peace with Christian leaders, including the Eastern Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, Bartholomew. As well as Christian leaders from throughout the region. Including the Anglican Bishop of Cyprus. Father Paul Matthew uh, of the Indian Orthodox Church, Father Relais George, a priest, a Coptic Orthodox priest, Father Rohan Rahan, a Jacobite Assyrian Orthodox priest, Archimandrite Bedros Manuelian, an Armenian Orthodox Archimandrite, Greek Orthodox Archbishop Hasim Gatas, and Reverend Dilip Davidson Mark, the pastor of the Church of South India. This evening's ecumenical meeting, which is the last public event on Pope's schedule this afternoon, is structured as a liturgy of the word outside of mass with an opening hymn, a prayer, reading from scripture, and prayers for peace in the place of the uh, universal prayers or prayers of the faithful, which will be said by the various representatives of the churches and Christian communities. The service will continue with the common recitation of the Our Father, the Pater Noster, followed by a blessing from the Ecumenical Patriarch and then from the Holy Father, and the service will conclude with the well-known hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, sometimes erroneously attributed to St. Francis. My name is Christopher Wells. I'll be providing the English language commentary for this evening's events. Whether you're joining us through the various Vatican media channels, the Vatican audio or radio app, the Vatican News web portal or YouTube channel, or via one of our partner stations, including Catholic Faith Network, Ahmadarshan TV, Shalom World Television Networks USA, EWTN TV, Sultan Light TV, Luminous Radio, Catholic TV, Shalom TV India, or Sunday Shalom, a very warm welcome, one and all. For those of you listening in on the radio, the Pope has just arrived in the cathedral and is receiving a basket of several baskets of flowers in welcome they're brought up by uh, a number of young children dressed of course in their sunday best for the holy father a short while ago the holy father concluded a meeting with uh, the Muslim Council of Elders. Before that, uh, he had time for a private visit with the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople, who is also taking part, as we mentioned, in the ceremony this afternoon. We've just begun with the hymn. And the last minute preparations for the beginning of the ceremony. The uh, Pope's uh, last visit with the Muslim Co Council of Elders ran just a little bit long. They've been very good at keeping a close schedule, but ran just a few minutes behind. The Holy Father is now uh, taking a few moments to pray in front of the statue of Our Lady of Arabia 
we mentioned the gifts of bouquets of flowers which were provided by the young boys and girls they were placed before the statue of our lady and the holy father is now being brought to the sanctuary where he is greeted by the representatives of the various religions. The Cathedral of Our Lady of Arabia is the seat of the Vicar Apostolic of uh, Arabia and it was built recently in the municipality of Awali the result of a donation by the King of Bahrain, who of course is hosting the Holy Father for this visit. And as the Holy Father uh, is brought to his place, as we mentioned, he's greeted by the various dignitaries, uh, not only the representatives of the various Christian churches and Christian communities, but also by the Catholic leaders who are taking part in this event, including Cardinal Kurt Koch, who is the Prefect of the Dicastery for Christian Unity. We now begin the ceremony. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught the church to keep your commandments out of law for you and for all brothers and sisters. Grant us the spiritual gift of grace and peace, so that your whole family may serve you with a willing help and well in harmony and peace, in purity of spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Father offers the opening prayer, as you heard in English. For those familiar with the Holy Father, uh, it's not often he has the occasion to speak in English, so a very great blessing for us to hear him in our own language. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya, near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. 
yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to, to one another, what does this mean? The reading was proclaimed by the Reverend Michael Lewis, the Anglican Bishop of Cyprus. And now we'll have the prayers for peace and structured like a the uh, prayers of the faithful that we're familiar with at Mass. They will be read by uh, various representatives of different religions. As you mentioned, uh, Indian Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox, Jacobite Syriac Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, and uh, Greek Orthodox. First, however, we'll hear the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. I understand the Holy Father will be speaking in Italian, and of course we'll be providing a translation of that. Tessa Reale, Signor Ministro della Giustizia, grazie della vostra presenza che ci onora. Siamo parti, medi e lamiti, abitanti della Mesopotamia, della Giudea, della Cappadocia, dal Ponto, dell'Asia, della Frigia, della Pampiglia, dell'Egitto e delle parti della Libia vicino a Cirene, romani qui residenti, giudei proseliti, cretesi, arabi. E li udiamo parlare nelle nostre lingue delle grandi opere di Dio. Santità, caro fratello Bartolomeo, cari fratelli e sorelle, queste parole sembrano scritte per noi oggi. Da tanti popoli, da tante lingue, da tante parti, da tanti riti, siamo qui insieme. E lo siamo motivo delle grandi opere compiute da Dio. Ma siamo in pace, no? Come quella mattina del Pentecoste, che non si capiva nulla, no? A Gerusalemme, il giorno di Pentecoste, pur provenendo da molte regioni, si sentirono uniti in un solo spirito. Oggi, come allora, la varietà delle provenienze e dei linguaggi non è un problema, è una risorsa. Un autore antico scriveva che se qualcuno dirà a uno di noi hai ricevuto lo Spirito Santo, per quale motivo non parla in tutte le lingue? Devi rispondere, certo che parlo in tutte le lingue. Infatti sono inserito in quel corpo di Cristo, cioè nella Chiesa, che parla tutte le lingue. Your Royal Highness, dear Mr. Minister of Justice, we feel grateful and honored by your presence. We are Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we hear them telling in their own tongues the mighty works of God. Your Holiness, dear brother Bartholomew, dear brothers and sisters, these words seem written for us today. From many peoples and languages, from many places and different rites, we have all assembled here because of the mighty works accomplished by God. In Jerusalem, on the day of Pentecost, Though they came from many places, all felt that they were united in one spirit. Now as then, the variety 
of origins and languages is not a problem, but a resource. As an ancient author wrote, if someone should say to one of us, you receive the Holy Spirit, why then do you not speak in all languages? We should answer, I do speak in all languages, for I am a member of the body of Christ, the church, which speaks all languages. Fratelli, sorelle, ciò vale anche per noi, perché noi tutti siamo stati battesati mediante un solo spirito e un solo corpo. Purtroppo, con le nostre lacerazioni, abbiamo ferito il santo corpo del Signore, ma lo Spirito Santo che congiunge tutte le membra è più grande delle nostre divisioni carnali. È perciò giusto affermare che, quando, che quanto ci unisce supera di molto quanto ci divide e che più camminiamo secondo lo Spirito, più saremo portati a desiderare e, con l'aiuto di Dio, a ristabilire la piena unità tra noi. Torniamo al testo di Pentecoste, meditamolo. Hanno risuonato in me due elementi che mi sembrano utili per il nostro cammino di comunione e che vorrei dunque condividere con voi. Sono l'unità nella diversità e la testimonianza di vita. Brothers and sisters, this also applies to us. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Sadly, by our divisions, we have wounded the Lord's holy body. Yet the Holy Spirit, who joins all the members together, is greater than our divisions according to the flesh. Consequently, it is right to say that what unites us far exceeds what divides us, and that the more we journey according to the Spirit, the more Will be, we will be led to desire and with the help of God restore full unity among us. Let us return to the text about Pentecost and meditating on it I was struck by two things that appear helpful for our journey of communion. I would like to share them with you. They are unity in diversity and witness of life. L'unità nella diversità. A Pentecoste i discepoli dicono gli atti d'Apostoli si trovavano tutti insieme nello stesso luogo. Notiamo come lo spirito che si possa su ciascuno sceglie tuttavia il momento in cui stanno, stanno tutti insieme. Potevano adorare Dio e fare del bene al prossimo, anche separatamente, ma è convergendo in unità che si spalancano le porte dall'opera di Dio. Il popolo cristiano è chiamato a riunirsi perché le meraviglie di Dio si avverino. Essere qui in Bahrain, come piccolo grece di Cristo, disseminato in vari luoghi e confessioni, aiuta a partire il bisogno dell'unità della condivisione della fede, come in questo arcipelago non, manca, non mancano saldi collegamenti tra le isole, così sia anche tra noi per non essere isolati, ma in comunione fraterna. First, unity and diversity. At Pentecost, the Acts of the Apostles tell us the disciples were all gathered together in one place. We should notice how the Spirit, who rested on each one, nevertheless chose a moment when they were all together. They could also worship God and do good to others separately. But when they came together in unity, the doors to God's work were opened wide. The Christian people are called to come together so that the marvelous works of God may be accomplished in our midst. Our presence here in Bahrain as a little flock of Christ, scattered in various places and confessions, helps make us feel the need for unity, for sharing the faith. Just on this archipelago, firm connections exist between the islands. May it be also among us, so that we are not isolated, but united in fraternal communion. 
Fratelli e sorelle, mi chiedo, come fare ad accrescere l'unità se la storia, l'abitudine, gli impegni, le distanze sembrano attirarci da altre parti? Qual è il luogo di ritrovo? Qual è il cenacolo spirituale della nostra comunione? È la lode di Dio che lo Spirito suscita in tutti. La preghiera dell'ode non isola, non chiude in se stessi nei propri bisogni, ma ci mette nel cuore del Padre e così si connette a tutti i fratelli e le sorelle. La preghiera di lode e di adorazione è la più alta, gratuita e incondizionata. Attira la gioia dello Spirito, purifica il cuore, ricostituisce l'armonia, risana l'unità. La preghiera di lode è l'antidoto alla tristezza, alla tentazione di lasciarsi turbare dalla nostra pochezza interiore e dalla pochezza esteriore dei nostri numeri. Qui loda non vada alla piccolezza del cresce, ma alla bellezza di essere i piccoli del Padre. La lode che permette allo Spirito di riversare la sua consolazione in noi è un buon rimedio contro la solitudine e nostalgia di casa. Ci permette di avvertire la vicinanza del buon pastore, anche quanto pesa la mancanza di pastori vicini, frequenti in questi luoghi. Il Signore proprio nei nostri deserti ama aprire strade nuove e impensate e far scaturire sorgenti di acqua viva. La lode e l'adorazione ci conducono lì, fonti dello Spirito riportandoci alle origini, riportandoci all'unità. Brothers and sisters, I ask, how do we make unity grow if history, force of habit, commitments and distances seem to draw us elsewhere? What is the gathering place, the spiritual upper room of our communion? It is the praise of God, which the Spirit stirs up in everyone. Prayer of praise does not isolate or close us in on ourselves and on our needs, but draws us into the heart of the Father and thus connects us to all our brothers and sisters. Prayer of praise and adoration is the high, highest form of prayer. Free and unconditional, it draws down the joy of the Spirit, purifies the heart, and restores harmony and unity. It is the antidote to sadness and the temptation to lament our interior inadequacy and our outwardly small numbers. Those who praise the Father are not disheartened by the smallness of the flock, but rejoice in the grandeur of being God's children. Prayer of praise allows the Spirit to fill us with his consolation. It becomes a wondrous remedy for loneliness and homesickness. It allows us to feel the closeness of the Good Shepherd, even at times when we feel the absence of our pastors, as frequently happens in these lands. Precisely in our own deserts, the Lord loves to open up new and undiscovered paths and makes fountains of living water spring up. Praise and worship leads us there, to the fountains of the Spirit, bringing us back to the origins, to unity. Mi farà bene continuare ad alimentare la lode di Dio per essere ancora di più segno unità per tutti i cristiani. Prosegua anche la bella abitudine di mettere a disposizione di altre comunità gli edifici di culto per adorare l'unico Signore. In realtà, non solo qua in terra, ma anche in cielo, c'è una scia di lode che ci unisce. E quella di tanti martiri cristiani di varie confessioni, quanti ce ne sono stati in quest'ultimo anno in Medio Oriente e nel mondo intero, quanti? Ora formano un solo cielo stellato che indica la strada a chi cammina nei deserti della storia. Abbiamo la stessa meta 
siamo tutti chiamati alla pienezza della comunione di Dio. Ricordiamo però che l'unità per la quale siamo in cammino è nella, nella differenza. E questo è importante tenere in conto. La unità non è tutti uguali, no. È nella differenza. Il racconto di Pentecoste specifica che ciascuno sentiva parlare gli apostoli nella propria lingua. Lo Spirito non cogna un linguaggio identico per tutti, ma permette a ciascuno di parlare altre lingue e fa in modo che ognuno senta la propria parlata da altri. Insomma, non ci rinchiude nell'uniformità, ma ci dispone ad accoglierci nelle differenze. Questo accade a chi vive secondo lo Spirito. Impara a incontrare ogni fratello e sorella nella fede come parte del corpo a cui appartiene. Questo è lo spirito del cammino ecumenico. It is good for you to persevere in the praise of God, so as to be all the more a sign of unity for all Christians. Maintain the fine habit of making your church buildings available also to other communities for the worship of the one Lord. For not only here on earth, but also in heaven, there is a song of praise that brings us together, sung by the many Christian martyrs of various denominations. How many of them have there been in these recent years? In the Middle East and throughout the world, many have there have been. They now make up a single starry sky, guiding our way as we journey through the deserts of history. We have the same goal. All of us are called to the fullness of communion in God. Let us remember, though, that the unity to which we are journeying is a unity in diversity. The Pentecost account relates that each person heard the apostles speak in his or her own language. The Spirit does not invent a new language for everyone but allows each to speak in other languages so that everyone can hear his or her own language spoken by others. In a word, he does not imprison us in uniformity, but disposes us to accept one another in our differences. That happens when people live by the Spirit. They learn to encounter each of their brothers and sisters in faith as a part of the body to which they themselves belong. That is the spirit of the ecumenical journey. Carissimi, chiediamo a noi stessi come procediamo in questo cammino. Io, pastore, ministro, fedele, sono docile alle azioni dello Spirito. Vivo l'ecumenismo come un peso, come un impegno ulteriore, come un dovere istituzionale oppure come il desiderio accorato di Gesù che diventiamo una sola cosa, come una missione che scaturisce dal Vangelo? Concretamente, che cosa faccio per quei fratelli e sorelle che credono in Cristo e non sono dei miei? Li conosco, li cerco, mi interesso di loro, tengo le distanze e mi atteggio in modo formale, oppure cerco di capirne la storia, e di apprezzare le particolarità senza ritenerle ostacoli insormontabili? Dear friends, let us ask ourselves how we are advancing on this journey. As a pastor, a minister, a member of the Christian faithful, am I open to the action of the Spirit? Do I see ecumenism as a burden, as a further commitment, as an institutional obligation, or as the heartfelt desire of Jesus that all be one, a mission that springs from the gospel? Specifically, what do I do for those brothers and sisters who believe in Christ and are not mine? Do I get to know them? Do I seek them out? Do I show interest in them? Do I keep my distance and stand on formality? Or do I try to understand their history and appreciate their distinctiveness without considering it 
an insurmountable obstacle. Dopo l'unità della diversità di cui abbiamo parlato, veniamo al secondo elemento, la testimonianza di vita. A Pentecoste i discepoli si aprono, escono dal cenacolo. Da lì in poi andranno ovunque nel, modo, nel mondo. Gerusalemme, che era sembrata il loro punto di arrivo, diventa il punto di partenza di un'avventura straordinaria. La paura che li chiudeva in casa rimane un ricordo lontano. Ora si dirigono dappertutto, ma non per distinguersi dalle altre e nemmeno per rivoluzionare l'ordine delle società e l'assetto del mondo, bensì per irradiare in ogni angolo la bellezza dell'amore di Dio attraverso la loro vita. Il nostro, infatti, non è tanto un discorso da fare a parole, ma una testimonianza da mostrare coi fatti. La fede non è un privilegio da rivendicare, ma è un dono da condividere. Come dice un testo antico, i cristiani non abitano in città particolare, non usano qualche strano linguaggio e non adottano un speciale modo di vivere. Ogni regione straniera è la loro patria, vivono sulla terra ma hanno la loro cittadinanza in cielo. Osservano le leggi stabilite, ma con il loro modo di vivere sono al di sopra delle leggi. Amano tutti. Amano tutti. Ecco il distintivo cristiano, l'essenza della testimonianza. Essere qui in Bahrain ha permesso a tanti di voi di riscoprire e praticare la genuina semplicità della carità. Penso all'assistenza nei riguardi dei fratelli e delle sorelle che arrivano a una presenza cristiana che nell'umiltà quotidiana testimonia nei luoghi di lavoro comprensione e pazienza, gioia e mitezza, benevolenza e spirito di dialogo. In una parola, pace. After unity and diversity, we now turn to the second element, the witness of life. At Pentecost, the disciples are opened up transformed and go forth from the upper room. They will then go out to all the world. Jerusalem, which had seemed their point of arri arrival, becomes the starting point of an extraordinary adventure. The fear that had kept them at home now becomes a distant memory. Henceforth, they go everywhere, not to stand out from others, much less to revolutionize the order of society in the world, but by their lives to radiate everywhere the beauty of God's love. Our message is not so much an address made with words, but a witness offered by deeds. The faith is not a privilege to be claimed, but a gift to be shared. As an ancient text put it, Christians do not live in particular cities, They do not use, the, use some strange language, and they do not adopt a special way of life. Every foreign region is their homeland. They live on earth, but have their citizenship in heaven. They observe established laws, but with their way of life, they are above the laws. They love everyone. They love everyone. This is the badge of Christians, the essence of our witness. Living here in Bahrain has enabled many of you to rediscover and practice the utter simplicity of charity. I think of the assistance you provide to our brothers and sisters who arrive from elsewhere, of your humble Christian presence and the witness you daily bear in the workplace by your understanding and patience, joy and meekness, kindness, and a spirit of dialogue. In a word, peace. Cari fratelli, ci farà bene interrogarci anche sulla nostra testimonianza, perché con il passare del tempo si può andare avanti per inerzia e affievolirsi nel mostrare Gesù attraverso lo spirito della beatitudine, la coerenza e la bontà della vita o la condotta pacifica. Chiediamoci ora che stiamo pregando insieme per la pace, 
Siamo davvero persone di pace? Siamo abitati dal desiderio di manifestare ovunque, senza attendere nulla in cambio, la mitezza di Gesù? Facciamo nostre, portando nel cuore e nella preghiera le fatiche, le ferite e le desunioni che vediamo attorno a noi? Fratelli e sorelle, ho voluto condividere con voi questi pensieri sull'unità che la lode rafforza e sulla testimonianza che la carità fortifica. Unità e testimonianza sono coessenziali. Non si può testimoniare davvero il Dio dell'amore se non siamo uniti tra noi come Egli desidera e non si può essere uniti rimanendo ciascuno per conto suo senza aprirsi alla testimonianza, senza dilatare i confini dei nostri interessi e delle nostre comunità come dello spirito che abbraccia ogni lingua e vuole raggiungere ognuno. Mi permetto aggiungere una riflessione. Lo Spirito Santo quel giorno crea una grande diversità. Sembra un grande disordine. Ma lo stesso Spirito che dà la diversità dei carismi è lo stesso che crea l'unità. Ma l'unità come armonia. Lo Spirito è l'armonia. Come diceva un grande padre della Chiesa, ipse armonia est. Lui è l'armonia. È quello che noi preghiamo che succeda fra noi questa armonia. Egli unisce e invia, raduna in comunione e manda in missione. Affidiamogli nella preghiera il nostro percorso comune e invochiamo su di noi la sua effusione, una rinnovata Pentecoste che dia sguardi nuovi e passi celeri al nostro cammino di unità e di pace. Brothers and sisters, it will also do us good to take a look at the way we bear witness, since with the passage of time we can weaken in our enthusiasm for reflecting Jesus through the spirit of the Beatitudes, the consistency and goodness of our lives and our peaceful conduct. Let us ask, Now that we are praying together for peace, are we truly people of peace? Do we desire to make the meekness of Jesus present everywhere, asking nothing in return? Do we make our own, bearing them in our hearts and in our prayers, the struggles, hurts, and conflicts that we see all around us? Brothers and sisters, I wanted to share with you these thoughts on unity which praise strengthens, and on witness, which charity confirms. Unity and witness are both essential. We cannot truly witness to the God of love unless we are united among ourselves in accordance with his will. And we cannot be united by remaining apart without openness to witness, without expanding the boundaries of our interests and of our communities in the name of the Spirit who embraces every language and reaches out to everyone. And I would like to add that on that day of Pentecost, the Spirit created a great diversity. And that as the unity that we share comes from the Spirit, for the Spirit is harmony. The Spirit unites us and sends us. He gathers us in communion and sends us on mission. Let us entrust to him in prayer our shared journey and beg the outpouring of his grace upon us in a new Pentecost that will open new horizons and quicken the pace of our journey of unity and peace. And that was the reflection of our Holy Father on the themes of unity and diversity and 
the witness of life, as the Holy Father said at the end there. Unity and witness are both essential. We cannot truly witness to the God of love unless we are united among ourselves in accordance with his will, and we cannot be united by remaining apart without opening openness to witness, without expanding the boundaries of our interests and of our communities in the name of the Spirit who embraces every language and reaches out to everyone. After a few moments of silent reflection, we will have the prayer for peace, which is uh, one of the highlights of this gathering, this ecumenical meeting being held this afternoon. Brothers and sisters, let us raise our prayers to the Lord, God of communion and peace, that in our churches and in our lives we may fulfill Christ's prayer for the unity of his disciples. Bless me, O Lord. Let us pray that unending security and prosperity may reign on the face of the earth. May the Lord Grant us his peace that we may be all become in the unity of the faith, a perfect being measuring up to the fullness of Christ. Let us pray for the leaders of all our churches, called to shepherd Christ's flock. May the risen Lord fill their hearts with zeal for the holiness and well-being of their people, so that all may be of one heart and one mind. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for an end to the violence perpetrated by harsh words, deadly weapons, and cold indifference. May our homes, our country, and all the countries of the world become heavens of peace where all may live in safety. Kyrie Lizon. Let us pray for all who are suffering in body or in spirit as a result of war, natural disasters, or civil unrest. May their troubled hearts know the peace of the Lord Jesus and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Kyrie eleison. نصلي معا من اجل كل العائلات المسيحيه المتواجدين على هذه الارض. Let us pray for all the Christian communities of this land that in our diversity we may reveal the face of Christ in our worship and in all our ministries, bearing witness together to the Lord Jesus and to the Father's kingdom of peace and joy. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Kyrie 
let us pray for believers of all religious traditions present in our country may we grow in mutual respect and understanding and work together for the benefit of the all human family kiriye laison representatives of the different Christian churches and Christian communities gather around the altar each of them holding a candle which they light and place in a candle stand before the altar the Holy Father will lead those gathered here in the Our Father. My Father, our Father, on the prayer of Christ, our Lord, and say, Our Father, Father and the ecumenical. In peace under the shadow of your holy and venerable cross, deliver us from the enemy visible and invisible. Make us worthy to give you thanks and to glorify you together with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and always and unto the ages of ages. The ecumenical patriarch gives a blessing, and now we'll hear a blessing from the Holy Father. Be blessed by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Depart in peace, and the Lord be with you all. I'm sorry, I small mistake there. The ecumenical patriarch gave the final benediction, and then the Holy Father pronounced the dismissal at the end of the service. And the leaders together bless the faithful as we hear the concluding hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
And with the conclusion of the hymn, the Canticle of Peace, there will be an opportunity for the leaders of the different churches and communities to gather together in the sanctuary with Pope Francis and the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew uh, together in the middle of that assembly of religious leaders where there will be a group photo opportunity that will bring us to very close to the end of this particular ceremony as the leaders gather together just a quick word about the future broadcasts tomorrow morning the Holy Father is celebrating the Holy Mass for the faithful of Bahrain in Bahrain National Stadium Pope Francis will be presiding at that liturgy. And that will begin uh, relatively early tomorrow morning. Holy Mass uh, a ceremony will start at about 6 o'clock with the arrival, 6 o'clock Rome time, that's 8 o'clock local Bahraini time, with the arrival of the Pope at Bahrain National Stadium. And Mass itself will begin at 8.30 local Bahraini time, that's 6.30 Rome time. We do invite you to join us for the live broadcast of that event. Later tomorrow, after the Mass in uh, the stadium, the Holy Father will have an encounter with young people at the School of the Sacred Heart. Now that's going to begin in the evening at 5 p.m. Bahraini time and 3 p.m. Rome time. We will, of course, cover both those events with live commentary, including translations in English of the major events and speeches. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for this evening's event, the Holy Father's uh, ecumenical meeting, meeting with uh, various representatives of churches and Christian uh, communities. That included a special prayer for peace. Meanwhile, we invite you to visit our Vatican News web portal at www.vaticannews.va, as well as our Vatican News English section, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts for full coverage of the Pope's visit to Bahrain, as well as news from the Vatican and around the world. On behalf of Vatican Radio, I'd like to thank our partner stations who help make these live broadcasts available including Catholic Faith Network, Admidarshan TV, Shalom World Television Networks USA, EWTN TV, Salt and Light TV, Luminous Radio, Catholic TV, Shalom TV India, and Sunday Shalom. Thanks to, to our producers and technicians here in the studio who made this broadcast possible. 
And thanks once again to all of you for joining us today. My name is Christopher Wells. You've been listening to Vatican Radio. Praise be Jesus Christ. Laudetur Jesus Christus.